Hey, y'all, what's going on? Thank y'all for joining me this week. Y'all, last week was off the chain for me. And this is where this word came in. So I hope that it blesses you. I really hope that it encourages you. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Sydney. Um, I am a coach. I'm a teacher. You know, I'm a lot of things. I'm just straight up me. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I have multifaceted. And I want to just take a moment and just remind you guys that each and every one of you are built and designed with a purpose um, for something that is greater, something that we could never imagine. And so what's happening right now across the board for a lot of people is that we're in a season of transition. We've we've kind of partially committed to God or we've decided that we just want to start getting to know God. And it's causing a lot of things to shift, which is making Making us kind of feel uncomfortable and so we find ourselves in positions where people who we thought were our friends and our and our riders and our you know a one since day one they're actually turning against us because we're turning towards god mm-hmm. or we have it to where our thoughts are set up our thoughts are becoming our own enemy because the enemy has seen that you are so committed to seeing what God wants to do in your life that the only way to get you to turn back or the only way to get you off track is to get you consumed in your emotions, right? To get you consumed in thoughts that aren't based in factual evidence and thoughts that no longer um, support are, are supported by facts and what really is. And so you get out here in this long in this low big sea or this low big basin of water that really kind of keeps you from being able to fully serve God. And my favorite commandment, y'all my favorite commandment is my favorite one is love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Y'all I love that. I'm just going to segue because y'all know how I roll. I love that. Because it is constantly something that I have to focus on doing every day. Is what I'm doing, is that a sign that I love God or am I putting an idol in the place of God? Is that a sign that I love God or am I creating um, a little highway that allows me to get comfortable and not have to worry about really serving God? You know what I'm saying? So I think um, a lot of us would do well to focus in and say, you know what, let me, let me get to this place where I don't allow my thoughts and I don't allow my emotions to keep me from serving God. The other thing here that is, is going on is that a lot of us, and if you're anything like me, this is for you. This one right here is for you. We are finding out that we can have it all and not do it all. But the, the issue, the issue with um, making a change Okay, changes on the outside, but transition is something that takes place over time. It has to it has to plant itself in our behaviors, in our mannerisms. And so that's when we have that pushback where I know I'm not supposed to be eating beef, but y'all, I like beef ribs. I haven't had a beef rib, but there have been times where I've had a craving for beef rib. Well, I've had a craving for this hamburger. I'm telling y'all this surgery I had is holding me back, but it was for my good. What is holding you back? Mm -hmm. what is keeping you from going on to the next level what's keeping you in the same place and I don't want you to look outside I don't want you to say oh it's because of how they treated me it's because of how they did this or it's because of how this happened I want us to look inward and say you know what the real reason why I'm struggling in my relationships first of all first of all some of us are anointed to, to change the kingdom and rattle the kingdom, to revive the kingdom through relationships. And so that's that's part of the reason why you're struggling in your relationships right now. And so I pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that you give them um, a reminder of the authority and the power that they have through your Holy Spirit to overcome the enemy right now. In your precious name, Jesus, strengthen them, God. Give them the breath that they need, the courage that they need to call things that are not as though they were and to look beyond the hurt of right now to look beyond how it feels right now and continue to walk and push through and become who you have called them to be in Jesus precious name we pray amen um which also reminds me who let me finish that thought so a lot of us are struggling in our relationships because like I said we've been anointed to do that but but where I was going with that was I was simply just saying that we have to make a decision to commit to walking to walking out the uncomfortable thing to get where God wants us to go. What is the obstacle that's standing between you and your promise? This obstacle, probably nine times out of 10, is a part of your process. 
So what you're going to have to do is get yourself together. When it gets tough, when it gets rough, it doesn't mean that you're not worthy of what God has for you. It doesn't mean that you're crazy. It doesn't mean that you're weak. Hello, that was for me. It just means that God is moving in a different direction and he's taking you to a new place. So all the old stuff that you learned before, and I haven't even gotten to my word yet. And I haven't even prayed over, over this yet. So I'm going to get there. But the things that God is doing in your life is so, is so um, enormous. And it's such a different thing, exceedingly an abundant thing, right? You never seen it before. So you're trying to pull. And, 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 and this is for me, y'all. This is for me. You're trying to pull in all all of all of your your girth you're trying to get yourself together and the reality of it is y'all that what you're doing that strategy no longer works because you're in a new place so I want to encourage you today we're going to talk about crushing it we're going to talk about we're going to look and see what the people of Israel did when their enemies were upon them they were in the middle of a war y'all yeah, know I'm gonna give you this scripture then I'm gonna go ahead and hop on into my little nuggets for y'all. I pray that this blesses you. I'm going to invite Holy Spirit on into the room. Um, I do want to say that if you're looking for a church home, please make sure that you follow at TRC today. Um, we would love to have you. Lady Angela McLeod, Bishop R.D. McLeod are um, such, such, such great leaders, y'all. Like, yo, for real. Databomb.com. But that's, you know, evident. It, I really believe, and I was saying this earlier this year, and I'm really going to go ahead and get into the prayer. We're going to get started. Um, that results post themselves. And so I, I really don't have to gloat on how great of spiritual parents they are because the results post themselves. That's how you want your character to speak for you, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what you're facing. That's my challenge to me. That is my challenge to me, no matter if I'm at work, no matter if I'm um, doing my entrepreneurship stuff, no matter if I'm doing ministry, I want my results. I want the results of my life to speak for themselves in all arenas and how I feel. I don't want how I feel to negate or change who I am when I show up. And I was talking about that today on my live that, guys, you got to remember that the enemy that people people know when you show up, they feel it. People are intimidated by you y'all for so long. Okay. See, I'm getting off track. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. And I pray that every heart that is listening to your word come forth tonight is blessed. God, that every heart is strengthened and encouraged, Lord God. And I pray that you give me the courage to, to sit here and, and do and say and be who you have called me to be, what you have called me to say. And God, I thank you for my leaders, God. And I pray for supernatural anointing to be on this moment for people to get closer to you than ever before. And God, the things that I bring to the table, Lord God, remove them. So people don't get lost in the sauce. I thank you for your power and I thank you for your authority. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray this prayer. Amen. So what I was actually about to say to y'all was that a lot of times I would show up. I forget. I, I didn't know who I was. Y'all think, first of all, y'all know I ain't been saved but, but for a couple Sundays. Okay. So that's number one. But number two, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know how powerful I was. I didn't realize that I was created for something greater than myself. And so I really just allowed people to abuse me and mistreat me. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was I ended up seeing that people were jealous of me or hating on me or disrespecting me for no reason. And, and, and to an extent, I, I accepted that because I thought to myself, that's what it is. I thought to myself. You know, like maybe that maybe this is what it is, and I've I've earned this, and and because I'm not who people felt like I should be, and because I'm not where uh where they think I should be, that's what I deserve. That's the treatment that I deserve. And y'all, that is a lie from the pit of hell. You hear me? Y'all know what? I'm, I'm gonna stay on topic. I'm gonna stay on task. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. So, uh, can I? Okay. Y'all want me to set the scene or y'all want me to read the word? Read the word, read the word, read the word. Jehoshaphat defeats Moab and Amnon. It says, after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Meonites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazion Tamar, that is in Gedi, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. 
The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people of Israel got to it and gave it to forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have not lived in it. Excuse me. They have lived in it and have not, excuse me, and have built a sanctuary for your name, saying if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in distress and you will hear and save us. But now here are men from Amnon, Moab and Mount Seir, whose territory you will not allow us to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All of the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the Lord. And then the spirit of God came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son Son of Mataniah, a Levite, a descendant of Asp, as he stood in the assembly. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Jer Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord God says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So tomorrow, march down before them. Jesus, y'all, I'm telling you, march down before them. They will be climbing up past Ziz and you will find them at the end of the gorge of the desert of Jerel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand form, and see the deliverance of the Lord that he will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Go out, face them tomorrow, and God will be with you. Y'all, I'm so excited. Like, oh my gosh. Like, y'all for real. Like, you know, they say you can't base Holy Spirit based off of, 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 of goosebumps, but y'all, I got goosebumps. I'm geek. I'm geek. So, so can we do this or can we do this? Y'all ready? Because y'all, y'all already know. Y'all already know. I, I can't help it. <clears throat> so first of all, so here's the thing. Right, because this is what kind of what we were talking about, and I guess I don't, I don't even know how to get started into this, guys. I'm gonna go back to the top. I'm gonna go back to the top, and it said, and so after this, and and so after this, you guys, I want y'all to go back and read verse uh, chapter 19 of uh, Second Chronicles, because I need you to understand what it was like um, living in this time where it was it was a cycle of of victory. It was a cycle of victory. It was a cycle of 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 uh, drama, it was it would be it would be cyclical. You know what I'm saying? And I think that a, a great large part of that for some of us is because our faith, for real, for real, isn't planted in what it should be. And so we got to get so committed to believing God and hearing God and following God that we break some of the cycles that we're struggling with. Y'all, I'm gonna be so transparent with y'all right now. One of the biggest, 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 biggest biggest cycles that I have really had to fight with in my life is the spirit of lying. Can I be real with y'all? We were talking before we were talking about, I was explaining to you guys that some of us are anointed for relationships. And so we get mishandled. We, first of all, so the enemy, right, creates this, this, facade that we have to do these things we have to earn our way into the to the hearts of people and that if we're not this way then we're not going to get the love or that we're not going to get the attention or that we're not going to get the support that we think that we need y'all I can't even tell you where that lie even begins but what I want to say is what happens is our misunderstanding or our acceptance of mistreatment from toxic beings and from toxic situations creates a cycle in us so what happens is I want this relationship because it does something for me I thrive off of this thing right and so because it does something for me I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep it so then we start to start we start that cycle of manipulation and that's where lying comes in 
Mm-hmm. And so what would happen is y'all, I'd be like, no, I got to figure this thing out. So I was exhausting myself on perfection. I was exhausting myself on showing up as somebody else wanted me to be. I was exhausting myself by trying to find ways to manipulate people. How can I manipulate them in their thoughts? How can I out be, how can I outmaster them? Y'all, you have to get free. You have to get free. You have to remember, you have to recognize that, and, and my bishop was telling me this just the last week, just last week, he said, Sydney, when do you get to a place where you realize that you are anointed and everything, everything has to bow to the instruction of God. Everything has to be obedient to what the spirit of God says. Your life is going to be so much easier because you're going to be beyond powerful, not just because of, of arrogance and pride or anything like that. No, because is it's the cognizant thought. And so y'all, I'm, I'm training my thoughts now to say, you know what? Just because this happened, I'm not going to allow my emotions to remove me from a move of favor that was done by God. Because here's the reality. Here's the other piece, right? Um, come here, come here, come here. Here's the other piece. That favor isn't always cool and and, and surplus and dripping with, 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 with fats of, of things that we desire. Sometimes favor is I'm going to move you to this dry place so you can learn how to function for this next season. Sometimes we get so caught up y'all because here it is, right? It's like that fake Christmas tree and the real Christmas tree. Some of us go into people's homes and we see the artificial tree and we get, oh my God, the artificial tree looks so great. Blah, 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 blah. blah. But beyond, be, beyond its looks, you know what I'm saying? It didn't have any roots. My point is that we get so lost in what we think something is supposed to look like that we miss being present. We really miss hearing what God is saying. And so going back to my point of recognizing the importance of the relationship, the real truth was that had I been in good relationship with God, I would have known who I was. And so a lot of the stuff that we deal with, a lot of the stuff that I was dealing with wouldn't have even came up. And then let me tell you now, you got to be careful because here, here it is, here it is. And after that, so God done got you together. You've grown. You're hearing from God. God is doing a new thing in your life. You're stable. And then after this, come on. And then after this, your enemies, come on, your enemies came through to wage war on you. The crushing thoughts came to wage war on him. The greed, the lust, the disappointment, whatever the thing is that's holding you back came to wage war on you. Even your finances and your family members are pointing out your failures, Jehoshaphat. It's like an avalanche that's coming on you. It alarmed him. It alarmed him. It alarmed him. That's what it say verbatim, y'all. It says some people came and told him. Some people came and told him, hey, you, well, you know. You know what they saying, blah, 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 blah. Or you got people prophesying over you. You got people speaking over you. Well, you know what they say? It was because you decided to, to do this, this, that, and the third. Your life ain't going to ever move forward. What? What? Because I didn't live my, because I didn't show up as you, as you wanted me to show up. I'm not going to be prosperous. I'm jealous. I'm going to have to repay. I'm going to have to pay the price for choosing my peace over what you, over what I was asked to do y'all they said a vast army is coming against you y'all it don't even be that deep sometimes because you know why because the god that we serve is bigger than that right (laughs) so jehoshaphat you know he get out here and he said you know what i'm on the phone with god let me go get on the phone with God. And that's something that I've been working on, y'all. I've been working on that because, boy, I get to thinking because I, because me personally, and this might not be your testimony, but I know for me, and I can only speak for me. For me, I am, I am always in my head. I'm always thinking, how could I have done this better? What are some things, what are some areas I can grow? How can I better support this? What needs to be changed? What needs to be tweaked? So I'm always, I'm always, you know, dropping thoughts. I'm always in a journal. Like it's very, very rare. Oops, that I don't have a journal or something in front of me because I'm constantly trying to keep up with, I'm constantly trying to keep up with, 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 with what I'm doing and, and ways to enhance it. And so what'll happen is I'll pick up the phone 
And I'll call one of my friends and you know, I'll be like, girl, what you think about this? And I'm talking to them. And the crazy thing about it, y'all, even the people that love you, this is why it's important for you to fix your relationship with God, because there are things that there are places that God is taking you that your besties ain't even seen. There are places that God is taking you that people can only pre prepare you for through prayer. So that's why it's important for you before you go talk to anybody for you to pick up that phone, for you to say, you know what, let me get my mind right. Let me see. Let me see what the Lord got going for me. You know what? You know what? Let me talk to God real quick. Let me see what he talking about. Let me see what God has in store for me. Okay. Let me see. Dear Lord, if you got to start start that thing by typing because y'all habits and we're not here for counseling, but neurotransmitter pathways is real. So y'all have y'all have to get my little phone out and I have to text myself like, okay, let's revisit this because right now, God, I'm struggling. Right now. I don't know what to do and I'm overwhelmed because I'm thinking about this and 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 then I'll remember see that's what that's that's why it's important for us to go to God because it's only in our conversation with him and I'm not saying to y'all that God be like Sydney you need to do this. like I ain't never heard God say that to me but what happens is when I stop long enough to say Sydney don't have an answer for this Sydney don't have an answer for this Sydney needs help God, I need you to help me. Then I start to recall what I've been meditating on, which is Isaiah 41, 9 and 10, right? Which is Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, right? Where I'm like, okay, wait a minute. God, you called me, right? You, you called me from where I was to call nations unto me. You said that there was something about me. You said that I was purposed enough, that I was strong enough to stand where I am. God, forgive me. Forgive me for forgetting that you promised me peace. I have learned y'all, and this is probably something that y'all already know, but I have learned that there really is no rush to do anything. And what I mean, I'm not talking, I'm not endorsing laziness. I'm not, I'm not endorsing procrastination. But what I'm saying is that you have to learn how to wait to hear from God. I'm getting ahead of myself. And so here's the thing. So as soon as I get done talking to God, you know what I'm saying? Once I break that old habit of skipping God for the people, that's when I get, that's when we start getting to the money. And it says the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Oh, I, I, y'all know I skipped something. Let's go back to, to verse three. It says, alarm Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. So he put, he put it, he ain't called his homeboy. He ain't called Jehaziel. He said, I'm gonna call God. And he, he said, you know what? And because because I need an expedited word from God, I'm going to fast. And a lot of us guys, please check out my, my channel. I have a lot of information up there about fasting. Check out my series page, y'all. I'll cover fasting in detail. But fasting, remember, it's not about getting what you want from God. It's about removing the noise. It's about thinning out yourself, lessening yourself so you can increase intimacy with God. And so the people of Judah came because they already know. So here's the thing. Once you get done talking to God and realize, you know what? I need something from God that I've never gotten before. Then it's, you know what? Let me call my sisters. I'm on the phone like, yo, I need y'all to pray for me. I need you to pray with me because I'm battling something that I've never seen before in my life. And it's done. And so when it says the people of Judah came, they're saying that you need to, that to me, the, the Bible is saying that you need to have a group of people, you need to have a circle of people who will support you in your endeavor to seek God and not stuff. Because, never mind, I was going to get off topic again. So here it is, y'all. So this, it says, then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of a new courtyard. And y'all, this is my favorite part, right? This is my favorite part about prayer too, low key. When you get to call God into remembrance of what he promised you, do y'all realize a lot of you guys are like, you know, I pray and I don't really hear God or I don't really see God moving in my life. Part of the issue, number one, is because you do not repent. You never go back to God in a apologize for the things that you're doing and even if you think for just a second if you if you say 
I don't think I, I'm, I don't think I'm strong enough to walk away from having sex before a marriage. It's okay to be honest about that with God. But you still need to go to God and say, God, this is where I'm at. And I don't really want to do that. It, it's okay if you like God. I really like, and I say this all the time because I've been here before. Y'all, this is real life. God, I really, really don't like authority. I really, really don't trust people. God, I really, really don't believe that this and this and this and this is supposed to be like bop, bop, shawa, whatever it is. It's kept you from seeking God. That's what's in the way. Whatever that sin is, that's what's in the way. Holy Spirit, you can't, you can't get a word through because you got so much stuff. You got to get rid of the stuff. You have to niche down. You have to focus in so you can hear and be heard. That's why your prayer is not going through, number one. Number one, because you don't repent. So you want to work on that. I also did a video on repentance. Y'all check out, y'all gotta check out my page. Y'all gotta follow my page for real. Y'all gotta check it out. So get, get, get your mind right. But the other thing is that you don't read your word enough to know what God is saying about you and you have to get in your word. Yo, Jehoshaphat, get up there in front of everybody. He like, God, remember all the stuff that you did? He said, are you not the God who is in heaven? Y'all think it's in, oh gosh, what is it? Oh gosh, oh gosh, y'all, I think it's in numbers. Hold on, 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 hold on. When, when Moses is asking, um, oh goodness, it's either in numbers 10 or 11. Y'all know I'm not a pastor, so I don't have, I don't be having, you know what I'm saying? I don't be, I don't be having that, um, that recall mind. But oh gosh, y'all, oh gosh. And, and, um, and, God, Moses is talking to God because the people of Israel going in, they pissed off because they don't want, they want something other than that nasty manna, that nasty miracle manna, because we get tired of, not, we do get tired of the miracle, and that's, that's something else we'll talk about later, but, uh, so, so he's, he's going in, and the Lord gives Moses instructions, and then God, then Moses says to God, but here I am among 600 men on foot, you say I will give them meat for a whole month, would they have enough? Uh, would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? And the Lord answered Moses and he said, Is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. That's why Jehoshaphat said, Are you not the God Almighty, the one that split the sea, that let the people walk through? They ain't get no mud on their Chelsea boots, on they on they Israeli Chelsea boots from way back in the first century. They blazers didn't get wet. They man buns weren't misty. Are y'all serious? No, absolutely. Are you not him? You rule over the kingdoms and the nations. You are almighty. You are sovereign. You are Jehovah Mekadesh. Y'all, come on. I'm getting excited. I got to calm down. Y'all, he, he is so sovereign. And he's like, and then on top of that, on top of that, you promise, you promise Abraham, you promise your best friend. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all, if I promise my best friend, I'm gonna do anything, anything at all. It's a wrap. It's done. It's, it's, don't even have to bring it up to me again. It's like, boom, it's done. On the account of my love for her, on the account of my respect for her, on the account of my desire to make sure that I have gifted her all of the things, the love and respect that she has gifted me. Do y'all know that just off the premise of, of Abraham and God's relationship, and y'all already know Abraham was about it, about it. He was out again. I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. So anywho, he lists all these things. Y'all got to go back and read this. And then he said, but wait a minute, God, wait a minute. Where you at though? Because here go these strong men, the people who you told us not to kill and now they're here in front of us, taunting us, basically saying, where your God at? Basically saying, we get ready to come and kill you. We get ready to take you for all you got. What up? What up though? What you gonna do? What's your plan? What? What? 
what is coming against you right now that's got you saying, but God, you promised me that you were going to bless me in this land. But God, you promised me that with great recompense and reward, I would see this through, through, through to the end. But God, you promised me that you would never leave me nor forsake me, but I'm calling, who the who? God, Jehovah, Yahweh, and I'm not hearing anything. I'm not seeing you move fast enough on my behalf. What in your life has you looking for a reset on your relationship with God? And the crazy thing about it is that it's not about a reset right at that moment. It's about waiting for his response. So it says all the men of Judah and their wives and little ones, they stood there before God. So they had to wait, y'all. And they had to wait. They had to wait. They had to wait. Don't be afraid of his no. Don't be afraid of, of God saying, and, and, and this is specific to the part where it's saying, don't be afraid of discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours, but God, excuse me, I'm, I'm got ahead of myself. It says, see how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession that you gave us as an inheritance. See how they playing us, God? They trying to take what you already gave to us. We did not destroy them when they came up from Egypt. We didn't touch a hair on their head. And God is telling you right now in this season, for the person that you didn't attack back, for the for the person that you didn't check, for the person that you didn't hold accountable with, with jealousy or with anger or with disappointment or whatever it was, whoever it is that you let get away with their foolishness, God is saying, don't be disappointed by my no. Don't be afraid by my no because I have something better in store for them because I done told these people, stop fooling with you. Touch not my anointed. So nothing he withholds from you or protects you, nothing he keeps from you is, is to hurt you or is to punish you. That's not even his ministry. Now, if you had a line, yeah, that is part of his ministry. But God wants the best for you, y'all. We serve an amazing God, a great father, and nothing he withholds from us or protects us from is greater than what he's going to release to us. His no is love. So you better learn how to wait, y'all. You better learn how to wait. Let's get back into the word real quick. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pray for y'all. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Y'all, I'm just a little rusty with my pacing. I know I've probably been jumping all over the place. You know, I took a little week off. My, my, my. But this word is so good to me. And so, so as they waited, then the Lord. And you got to watch the transitional words in the Bible because it's like then and later and now. But anyway. So it says, then the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, um, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite, a descendant of As, as he stood in the assembly. And this is what's so dope, y'all. Um, for those of you who have ever read the book of Psalms, As has written several of the Psalms. And he was like around, you know, I, I, from what I understand, I'm not a theologian, during David's time. And so this is like showing you guys the, the grace of generational blessing, how the mantle is passed down from generation to generation. Pretty freaking dope. Pretty freaking dope. So anyway, it says, um, it says, and he said, listen, and you know what? Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop here. I'm going I'm to stop here. I'm going to read the Bible and I'm, I'm going to pray for us and I'm going to encourage us and I'm going to let us go. He said, and we can pick up part two next week. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord thy God says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours, but God. The reason why he told you no, the reason why you had to wait is because it is not for you to fight it's not for you to handle he's got something that he wants to show you god is still there he's still present he is not he's not a bad father y'all he's not gonna give his son a scorpion he's not that's not his ministry he is here present with us and so i don't know what you're going through today i don't know what kind of blessing you need i don't know what kind of breakthrough you need i don't know um, what you're struggling with but i want to pray with you and i want to invite you guys tomorrow is tuesday so y'all already know what's up it's Bible study night, 7 p.m. Check my YouTube, check my Facebook for the link. Um, but I want to pray with you all and encourage you. And I want you, I want you to know that this season, this transitional period is not going to kill you. It's not. It is going to empower you. It's going to encourage you. It is okay. I am learning. It is okay to ask questions. It is okay to to recognize when it is most definitely time for God to step in and when it's time for God to when it's when it's time for God to take over. I want to stop you to sit your butt down somewhere and just wait on the process and wait on his yes, wait on his strategy because that is where God is. I love God so much. Um, 
and I'm, I'm praying for you guys that you continue to get to know God. And I pray that this was really helpful for you. So I'm going to go ahead and close us out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you just asking that you um, continue to give us the courage to press forward. God, we thank you for every no that you've given us. God, we thank you for every time that you've protected us from putting things before you. God, for every time that you have listened to our cries in the middle of the night, we thank you. God, we thank you for being a great father. And Father, I pray right now, Lord, that the things that are trying to crush your people in their minds, in their bodies, Lord God, that they are completely just annihilated in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray over your people as we walk through this week, Lord God, that everything that they thought they lost, so long as it's in agreement with your will, is restored to them. Father, I prophesy against the spirit of anxiety. I prophesy it's going to fall right now in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the spirit of worthlessness. Mm -hmm. over the spirit of lust, over the spirit of greed right now in the lives of everyone here on this live, that it is going to fall dormant. And God, I pray right now, I pray for a release, Lord God, a release of your spirit. God, that all the empty places that we, we aren't even aware of, God, that you fill it with Holy Spirit. Father, take away our hearts, Lord, that are hard and bitter and filled with unforgiveness and filled with anxiety and fear. And God, replace it. Give us a heart of flesh. Father, perform heart surgery on us. God, I thank you for everything that you're depositing in the spirit in the, in the spirit and the hearts of your people. We magnify your name, Father, for your divine protection and for your, excuse me, and for the provision of your promise. In your precious name, we pray, Jesus. Amen. I love y'all. I um, hope that this video was a blessing and peace. <laughs>